Jill. All right. Uh, Stacy. All right, we're going to give it another 30 seconds or so because we want everybody on deck and we want to make sure that everybody is connected and uh, we're ready to rock and roll. So we got a lot we want to share with you this evening and we're going to get right to it in about 30 seconds. But I can still listen for the hello, so you can feel free to unmute yourself and keep the hellos coming. Hello. Oh, hello, Tiffany. How are you, darling? Sherry, I see your name. Hey, everybody. Hey, Shanta. Hey, hey, hello. Hi. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, hey, Anna, how are you? All right. All right, good. Very good. Well, listen, we are going to go ahead and get started so that we don't hold. Good evening and happy Tuesday. My name is Michelle Fletcher, and I am the academic recruiter uh, for the college. Thank you all for joining us uh, this evening and joining us in this session, sharing an hour uh, of your evening uh, with us. Now, before I get started, started, just as an FYI, this session is being recorded. So I just wanted you uh, to know that. Now, over this next hour, what we want to do is talk with you about programs, options, and opportunities at CBCC. We just want to make sure that you are fully aware of what we have to offer and that you know how to get started. And I promise you, we have a panel here this evening that is ready to talk with you about all the latest and greatest things uh, that are going on at CBCC. Now, we want uh, the session to, uh, to be interactive. We want it to be engaging. So I would ask you, go ahead and get those questions together because, again, I have a panel here that really wants to engage with you. So uh, you will know who's on the panel, and um, I'm going to introduce them to you. You'll, you'll uh, put a face and a name together. Uh, they're going to kind of give you the CBCC wave here in just a minute. We have Michael Duncan. Michael is the admissions representative with us this evening. We have Ryan McNamara. Ryan is the money guy. He'll be talking with us about how to find the money. And I promise you, there's plenty of money out there. Am I right, Ryan? There you go. It's out there to get. Emily Munez. Emily is going to be talking with us about several things, from onboarding as to uh, just making that transition into CBCC and helping you get started. She's going to talk with you about counseling and programs. And then she's going to talk with you about transfer uh, as well. So again, get your questions together. Start thinking about uh, questions that you might have, an idea, a thought. We want to, uh, uh, to hear from you. Now, uh, if you look at the bottom here, you'll see some features here. Over to my right, uh, you have a button that will allow a reaction button. That button allows you uh, to engage with us. And we very much, again, love for you to uh, engage with us so that uh, we can make sure that your questions are being answered. Now, throughout the evening, I am going to launch several polls. Those polls are anonymous. So that means when you take the poll, we don't know uh, who specifically is, you know, by name, who's taking the poll. But I do encourage you to uh, participate in, in the polls because that information, that feedback helps us to know how to uh, kind of tweak uh, these sessions and hopefully make them better uh, as we go. So again, get your questions together. Feel free to engage with us with any of the features uh, there at the bottom of your screen. And we are going to go ahead now and we're going to launch our first poll for the evening. And so I'm going to go ahead and launch that first poll and you will see it come up on your screen. And that poll is asking the question, what is your reason for attending the information session tonight? Now that's an important question because we want to make sure that we get your questions answered uh, this evening. So go ahead and engage that for about another 45 seconds or so, and then we'll talk about it on the other side. Okay, give another 15 seconds to that. All right, we're gonna end the polling, and then I'm gonna share the results. Okay, so as you can see here, applying for college, financial aid, learning about programs, uh, uh, enrolling in classes, paying for classes, and the other, whatever the other is, please feel free, again, to put your questions in the chat. You can unmute yourself. I would dare you to unmute yourself and ask your question in your own voice because we would love to hear your voice. But uh, unmute yourself uh, and ask that question because we want to make sure. And, uh, I, I got a question. Yes. 
Did I hear someone say they have a question? All righty. Well, we, we will go ahead and get started. Again, feel free to put that question in the chat. We'll be checking the chat often. So feel free to put those questions in the chat as well. And we're gonna go ahead and get started. And our first presenter for the evening is Michael Duncan, uh, uh, admissions representative. Michael. Thank you, Michelle. Good evening, everyone. My name is Michael Duncan. I work in the admissions office and I wanted to briefly talk to you tonight about the application process and just a couple of things to keep in mind if you're a brand new student. So if you're not yet a student with us, uh, you'll want to go to our website, which is www.centralvirginia.edu. And right in the middle of the homepage, there's a big yellow tab that says apply now. If you click that, you'll be taken right to the application portal where you can create an account in our application system using a personal email address, and then you'll be able to access our application. And the application itself only takes about five to seven minutes to complete, so it's pretty easy and short, but you'll wanna make sure you, that you can take your time and read the questions carefully to prevent any kind of errors on your student account because what you put on your application is the information that goes on to your student account at CVCC. And as you're filling that out, if you have any questions about anything specific on the application, then feel free to contact the admissions office. We'll be happy to help with that. Now, once you submit your application, the confirmation page there is gonna contain your CVCC student ID number and a temporary password for your My CVCC account. So make sure you write those down before you exit the page. You'll also receive an email confirmation that contains a welcome message to the college and some instructions about your next steps. Now this email serves as your acceptance letter. We currently don't mail out acceptance letters, so you'll want to hang on to that email. And at this point, you know that, that you are accepted to CVCC and you're considered a student with us. And once you're accepted, you can get your high school transcripts to us as well as any college transcripts as well if you wanna bring in any kind of transfer credit. Now, there are a couple of scenarios in which you do not need to submit the application for admission. First, if you are currently a dual enrolled student who is currently taking classes with us or just took classes with us, you would already be in our system as an active student, so there's no need to reapply once you finish your dual enroll classes once you graduate from high school. And second, if you've taken classes with us within the past three years, maybe some of you took some classes already in the past, but you needed to take a break for one reason or another, and now you're ready to resume. You would not need to submit the admissions application again if you have attended within three years. You still would be in our system as an active student. Now, once you're accepted, you're gonna to want to access your student accounts. You can do this by clicking the My CVCC button in the upper right-hand corner of the homepage, and you'll be able to set up your username and your password to access your student account. And this way, you can check your account for any kind of registration holds that might be there that you need to get resolved before enrolling in classes. And also to check to see if you are classified as an in-state student or an out-of-state student. One major benefit of attending CVCC is that we can offer an in-state tuition rate to domiciled Virginia residents, which is lower than the out-of-state rate. And the admissions application has a section on it called Your Background. And here is where you establish your eligibility to receive the in-state rate. So make sure you pay close attention to those questions. Just listing a Virginia mailing address as your home address does not automatically qualify you for the in-state rate. And the application is automated, and so it's going to respond to the answers you give on that page. Now, if you're classified out of state and you think you should be in-state, then you're more than welcome to appeal that. You'll just need to contact the admissions and records office, and we can walk you through that process, no problem. Well, I think that's about all I wanted to cover tonight for the admissions process. Again, please feel free to contact us in the admissions and records office with any specific questions you might have, and we'll be happy to help. I'll post our contact information in the chat box so you can have that. So this time, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Ryan in our financial aid office. Yeah, thank you, Michael. Hi, everybody. So we're going to talk briefly about financial aid. I'm going to share my screen because there are some things that I'd like for you to see um and that way we can kind of go through it together so first i want to say welcome and congratulations congratulations to two different groups one if you have just graduated high school 
and you're moving on to CVCC, we want to say welcome and congratulations to you. And also, welcome to those of you that have maybe been out of college for a while, or you've never started college, and you've been out of high school for a number of years, and you're considering going to, to college, uh, we want to say welcome to you, and we are here for you. So let's get started. So how do you pay for college? So Michael just went through the first step, which was to apply for admission. And now we're gonna to touch a little on how to apply for financial aid. So the easy way to apply is you're gonna submit the FAFSA. The FAFSA is the free application for federal student aid. The website is fafsa.gov. So you wanna make sure that you submit that because that's what determines your financial need, which then determines what aid, what state federal grants and scholarships that you're eligible for. So one thing to keep in mind, make sure when you do go to submit the FAFSA, that it's fafsa.gov, not fafsa.com, not fafsa.org or anything like that, because those websites are gonna charge you for what you can do for free on your own at the fafsa.gov website. So how much does it cost to attend CVCC? Again, Michael had mentioned in-state tuition rate, so the tuition rate for this upcoming year is $161.25 per credit hour. So to give you an idea, you know, full-time is 12 credit hours. So if you're enrolled full-time at 12 credits, it would be $161 times 12. So that's what your tuition and fees would be for the semester. So that's to kind of give you an idea of what you're looking at. So that's the not so good part. The good part, again, I mentioned is the FAFSA. So if you're interested in enrolling this upcoming fall, you wanna make sure you submit the 2021-22 FAFSA. Again, fafsa.gov is the website. One thing to keep in mind, if you're under the age of 24, you're going to need parent information on the FAFSA. And one parent is gonna to need to sign the FAFSA as well as you, the student. So just keep that in mind. And one final bullet that I wanna mention, when you submit your FAFSA, that may not be all. You may need to do additional steps. Sometimes the FAFSA requires us to receive additional documentation from you. So we may ask you for some, you know, some type of document or some form that we need filled out. So make sure you do that because we cannot award your financial aid until all those documents have been received. So just because you submit the FAFSA, um, does not mean that's the end of it. There may be an additional step that we need from you. So just make sure that you're aware of that and pay attention to that. So what financial aid may you be eligible for? So the federal grant, again, most of these are based on the FAFSA. So again, you need to do the FAFSA to be eligible. But the federal Pell Grant, you can receive up to $6,495 for the year in the Pell Grant. And now I mentioned before, tuition is $161.00 per credit hour, if you're enrolled full-time, your charges are gonna be $1,935. If your Pell Grant is the 6,500 for the year, half of that would be for the fall, that's gonna well exceed your $1,900 in tuition. So for a lot of students, the federal and state grants cover all of your tuition and fees and you don't have to pay a dime for your education at CVCC. In addition to the federal grants, there are state grants there. I wanna point out too, there's the Commonwealth grant that you can receive up to $2,000 for the year. And the PTAP is a part-time grant. So if you're enrolled one to eight credit hours for a semester, there's still aid available for you. You can still be eligible for the Pell Grant, not the full 6,400, but a prorated amount plus the state grant. So regardless if you're taking one credit hour all the way up to full time, there is aid that's available for you. So I want you to, to make sure you understand, sure you understand that. that. Uh, there's a tuition payment plan. So if you have an outstanding balance that you know your aid does not cover everything, we have payment plan options. So instead of having to pay one lump sum for your semester, you can spread it out over three or four months. So that helps um, instead of having to pay again, all up front for the semester. Uh, one question we get a lot is, can you use financial aid to purchase books and maybe even a laptop? And the answer is yes. So if your financial aid, if your grants and scholarships are greater than your tuition and fees charge for the semester, that extra money you can use in the CVCC bookstore. So instead of having to pay for your books out of pocket or putting it on a credit card, you can use your available financial aid 
as your payment for that. So that's an added benefit also. You can start using your financial aid in the bookstore beginning August 9th for the fall semester. So just keep that in mind. And one other, uh, one other thing I wanna mention is, you know, things have changed. That being said, so when you submit your FAFSA, your 2021-22 FAFSA, it's looking at 2019 income information. And a lot has changed since 2019. So if your household income um, is less now than it was in 2019, reach out to our office and let us know. There's possible adjustments that we can make to your FAFSA. Um, another thing would be, you know, if, if your house has experienced large medical bills, maybe from COVID and things like that, or if somebody has lost a job or hours have been reduced, and, you know, currently right now, the income is not what it used to be in 2019, let us know because we can possibly make an adjustment. And the last thing I want to mention is that Virginia has a new tuition-free G3 program. And so there is a list on our website under financial aid of eligible G3 programs. I'm not sure if Emily is going to touch on it later, but basically if you qualify financially for and you're in, enrolled in these programs, your tuition and fees will be covered plus extra for books. Um, so even if you're not eligible for, let's say the federal grant or even the state grant does not cover all of your tuition, if you're in a G3 eligible program, you're good to go. So again, if you have questions on that, please reach out to our financial aid office. Um, you can reach out to your college navigator or your counselor, and we would all be happy to help you um, with that. But that's all the question, or that's all the stuff that I have. So I'm not sure if there's any financial aid related questions that anybody has. I don't know if anyone's been there's a couple in the chat, Ryan. Okay. I have a question. Go ahead, Brittany. Question two. So with um, the whole, how do you figure out um, your award letter? I know that I went on my SIS, the um, student information system, and um, I've tried to see my award letter, and it's not letting me at all. OK. So um, so when you go to SIS, it's in your, your student center. There should uh -huh. be a link there that says view financial aid. Uh -huh. If you cannot find it, then just email us or give us a call, and we can walk you through it. So that's where okay. it should be. Um, okay. Okay, and Josh asked, how would they know what documents we need? So again, in your message center, in us, so you go on our main website, centralvirginia.edu, and you click on the My CVCC. When you log into that, click on SIS, which is Student Information System, and you'll see there's a, um, in your student center, there's a to-do list. On that to-do list is basically a list of documents that we would need from you. Um, so that's where it would be. And again, Josh, if you can't find it or if you need help, reach out to our office oh, or contact your counselor and we'll be happy to, to help you and walk you through it and tell you exactly what's needed. Good questions. Hello? Yes, ma'am. Uh, my name is Mia Baker and um, I've been calling there and so I try to seek help. I'm on um, disability and I want to see to talk to you about the um, financing. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. Um, if do you, let's see, I'm going to send you a private message and if you could reply to it and just give me your phone number and I can reach out to you tomorrow and we can go, go over everything. Is that okay? All right. Ryan, it looks like there's another question, question yeah. from Sherry. So, yeah, so Sherry got married in 2020. Is your spouse's income from 2019 considered for your aid? Yes, it is. So if you, um, yeah, if you have recently gotten married, um, the FAFSA is going to ask what's your current marital status as of right now. And so when you indicate that you are married, you are going to need to include your spouse's information in, um, in the income section of the FAFSA. Jerry, does that help? Good questions. All right, Josh, I'll help. I'll send you a message as well. 
and then uh, I'll get you, I'll get your phone number and all. But all right. So with all of that being said, I want to say thank you. And now I'm actually going to pass it back to Michelle, who's going to ask another poll question. All right. Yes, we do have another poll for you. And uh, just as Ryan has uh, shared a lot of information with you about financial aid, trying to ensure you that uh, there is aid available and that we will do everything we can to help you tap into that aid so that you can, uh, again, become a student with us at CBCC. We also want to make sure that you have the right tools, that you have what you need uh, once you come to campus or whether you do your classes on the campus or online. So this next poll is going to basically get at that question and I'm gonna go ahead and launch it. And it's a two part question and it's asking, do you have a computer or laptop needed for your classes? And uh, do you have reliable internet service? So I'm gonna end the poll cause you got that done very quickly. I'm gonna share the results. Okay, and there you have the results. Now, uh, Emily, when she speaks with you at some point in the evening is going to, uh, this question is gonna come back around because she's going to address um, what we're able to do in terms of helping you if you should need a laptop or you need a, re a reliable internet service throughout the uh, semester. So uh, just gonna put a pin in that for right now, but we will see this uh, question again. So at this point, I am going to stop sharing and Emily is gonna come now and she's gonna talk with us about uh, onboarding at CBCC, Emily. Thank you. Um, welcome everyone. So my name is Emily Muniz. I am one of the counselors at CVCC. Um, we just kind of went through a transition. Um, so for those of you that are new to us, you know, this will just be how it is, but um, this is a new process for us. Um, so for new students, when you apply, you will actually be assigned a college navigator as well as an academic counselor like myself. Your college navigator is going to help you if you need to, you know, finalize anything with your application, if you need help with your FAFSA. Um, they will make sure that we have determined your college readiness. So for math and English, we know where you are with that. Um, we used to have placement testing. You may still hear people say that they need to take the placement test. That is no longer required. Um, we now have a survey that students fill out and that actually determines the math and English courses that students are eligible for. So if you have graduated high school within the last five years, your survey is going to ask you what your high school GPA was and what was your highest level of math. And that will determine again, what you're eligible for as far as the math and English classes go. If you have been out of high school for five years or more, your survey is gonna look a little bit different. And basically it will give you some example questions for math and English, but no matter what you put in there, you will be eligible for whatever math or English course you feel comfortable taking. And so when you go to meet with your counselor, we will talk about you know, what is the best place to start for you um, based on your goals and your comfort level and the program that you're going into. So high school transcripts are not necessarily required. They aren't for this. They could potentially be for financial aid. So you may hear you know, some people advise you that you need to submit a high school transcript. So, you know, if you've already done that or you plan to do that, that is okay. You don't need it for this survey though. Um, so once you've applied for admission, as Michael said, jot down your login information because that is what you need for, um, to complete the survey. And it does determine, you know, if you've been out of high school for five years or less or more based on your answers um, to that. So again, you'll meet with your navigator, make sure that everything is completed up front, um, that you're ready to enroll, and then they will connect you with your assigned counselor. We will talk about you know, what your goals are. So are you planning on transferring? Are you planning on staying here just at CBCC, you know, doing a technical program or an applied associate degree and then finding a job? And then we will talk about you know, what makes the most sense as far as course load um, and things like that when we go to enroll in the classes. Your navigator will you know, show you how to enroll in classes online. You are welcome to do that. Many of our students choose to enroll with us. Either way is fine. We do recommend though that you at least meet with us at least once a semester so we can make sure you're on track to meet your goals academically. Um, once you've been enrolled in your classes, you will have access to our new student orientation. That is still um, online through our Canvas site. Um, so again, once you've enrolled in classes, you'll have access to that. 
You can go through it kind of at your leisure. It is again online. We do encourage you to do it before classes start so that you're prepared. Um, some of the things that may be included in there, but that Michelle was also alluding to, um, is resources on campus. So we have tutoring that's included in your tuition. We actually have three different tutoring centers. One is our writing center. So that's specific for you know, English classes or you know, even a science lab report if you need help with that. I am the transfer counselor. So I recommend students um, to work with the writing center when they're working on their application essays. Um, so they're, they're there to help with any sort of writing assignment. We also have what we call the MAL, which is the Math Achievement Learning Lab. And so that's tutoring specific for math classes. Um, we also have the Student Success Center. So that has more you know, subjects um, for tutoring. So um, all three of those, you can sign up um, to meet with a tutor. I highly encourage you to do that early because um, they can start to you know, get booked as the semester goes on. Um, another resource we have that Michelle was talking about is the, we have loaner hotspots and loaner laptops. So for everyone that completed the survey, it looks like you have internet um, and a computer, so that's good. But for those of you that may not, um, you can request to borrow a hotspot if you don't have reliable internet, or you can request to borrow a laptop for the semester if you don't have that. Um, there are forms for those, they're electronic on the website. We also have, of course, a bookstore on campus. You can purchase your books through the bookstore, either on campus or online. Um, as Ryan mentioned, you can charge your books to your financial aid starting August 9th if you have some money left over after tuition. We have student accessibility services. So if you need any sort of accommodation, my colleague Meredith McLaughlin is who you would reach out to. I can put her information in the chat. Um, get with her as early as you can so that you can have the accommodations that you need um, for when the first day of class begins. We are encouraging students to make appointments with either your navigator or your counselor, depending on where you are in the process. Um, so find out who your advisor is and you can make an appointment through our Navigate system. If you need help with that, you can contact our counseling office. I'll put their information in the chat as well. And they can either make the appointment for you or walk you through that process. Um, you can also just email your advisor if you have their information as well. Um, all of that is on the website. So I'm going to pass it back to Michelle. I'll put some of this stuff in the chat. I saw a bunch of questions coming through. Um, I don't know, Michelle, if you want to do your poll first and then address those or how you want to handle that. No, go Emily, ahead. You can, can you those. put the... Emily, can you put the link um, to the hotspot in the um, laptops yes. in the chat? Can I actually get either Ryan or Michael to do that so that okay. I can put the other stuff? But yeah, we'll put it in there for you, Brittany. Yeah, I'll do that. Um, all right, so let me see here. I saw a question about not having a high school diploma. Yeah, so I've if you got I've, your GED. I've taken that's... care of that. Okay. I've been chatting oh. with Marilyn about that. Oh, okay. So GED is just fine. We're good with that. Well, yeah. well, we'll go ahead and put it out there because we might have more than sure. one person on the call. So if you got your GED, that's, you know, high school equivalency, you would just, when you do your survey, it's going to ask, you know, GPA. Um, we may need a copy of your GED scores so that we can determine as far as college readiness goes, where to start with math and English. Um, if it was within the last five years, if it was five years or more, you know, you're considered now, a okay. student and you're eligible to, you know, start wherever you need to. Um, I can't speak about TRIO, unfortunately, but we can put that contact information in there um, unless someone else. Well, yeah, the TRIO program, and I, again, I would uh, ask that uh, whoever's inquiring about it, please go to our website, get to our homepage, and uh, you'll see uh, a tile there uh, on the homepage that would indicate uh, where that trio information uh, you just click in and, and you'll be able to read about it. But it is a program that we offer. Uh, you do have to meet certain requirements to be able to participate in this program, but it is geared toward helping students uh, be successful at CVCC. So there are a few requirements. Um, and once you meet those requirements, then uh, this program goes to work helping you in every way that they possibly can. And when I say that, I mean from uh, whatever need you might have that might impede or get in your way uh, in terms of uh, hindering your success, they are doing everything they can to remove those blocks. And uh, again, uh, hopefully helping you to be as successfully as you possibly can at CBCC. I do understand there are some requirements, 
But uh, I would uh, ask anybody that's interested, get to the homepage, read a little more about it, and you will see contact information there as well. And uh, the name you're looking for is Dr. Evora Baker, and she will be able to talk with you a lot more about that program. Michelle, there was one more question um, asking, will there be in-person classes in the fall and will they be able to take a tour of the campus before classes start? Uh, we're working on that uh, right now. And what I would uh, say is, and I'll put my information in the, in the chat as well to just reach out to me. Uh, if you're looking to do something individual, you know, maybe you and your family, most definitely, we can uh, definitely uh, make that happen. For bigger groups, uh, we're, we're, we're not doing, you know, really big groups right now. But if you are looking to just uh, come and tour the campus, by all means, uh, I'll put my information uh, in the uh, chat and get with me ASAP because I would love to uh, offer that to you. And we will have on-campus classes. We're doing about 60% on campus this fall. All right, well, we're gonna go ahead and launch this next poll. And this next poll now is asking the question, uh, what programs of study are you interested in at CVCC? So we're gonna get that launched as soon as I can get this. Here we go. Uh, you should see it now. Uh, what programs of study are you interested in at CBCC? Now, I do believe that you can only ch choose one. So choose the one that, uh, again, that is of most interest to you. And if you don't see something there, by all means, uh, still inquire about it, because we'd like to have a shot at being able to answer uh, your question. Okay, I'm going to give you another 30 seconds with this. All right, we will go ahead and end the polling and we will share the results. So it looks like there's a, a little of everything here uh, from transfer to uh, look like administration of justice on down the line. So that's just fine because uh, Emily is gonna come back here in just a minute and she's gonna talk with us about some of these programs. She's gonna talk with us about uh, transfer and, um, and counseling. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing at this point and I am going to give it back to Emily. Emily? Okay, so hello again. I'm gonna share my screen um, and start with just talking kind of generally about our programs that we offer. So if you go to centralvirginia.edu and click on programs and classes right at the top, this is kind of a snapshot of our programs and they're broken up by um, area of study. So business, education, health sciences, um, general studies is under this humanities option, industry and manufacturing, public safety, science, technology, and the social sciences. Um, so if you know kind of an area that you're interested in, this is a good place to start. Um, but if you want to click see all programs of study, this site, um, this page is a little bit um, better in my opinion. It lists all of them. And you can search by length of program. So we have some certificates that may only be a semester or two. We have one year, two year programs. Um, we have two different types of associate degree programs. So if we click on two years, um, this is listing all of our applied associate degrees. So those are the types of associate degrees that are not necessarily designed to transfer. Um, these are for students who want the two year degree, but they don't plan on going on to a four-year school. They wanna get a job after that time. Um, so you would wanna look at this list here. Um, we have a lot of great programs. Um, this G3 initiative is fairly new. I can't really speak too much to it because it is that new, but a lot of the programs that already exist uh, do qualify. So when you meet with your navigator and or your counselor, you know, we'll make sure that you're in the right program. Um, I forgot to mention that uh, when I was talking earlier. Um, that's one of the first things we talk to you about is we want to make sure that the program that you chose on the application is correct and so that you're on the right track. Um, and we will also make sure, you know, if it's G3 el eligible, that we've discussed that and, and pursued that as well. Um, and then the two-year transfer programs are listed here. Um, there's far fewer of these. Um, but these are designed for transfer. So these are the programs that are gonna have more general education classes. So you're not really getting into the major with this quite yet. Um, you know, with the business program and engineering, you are getting some of those classes. 
Um, the rest of them, again, much more general education. So you're doing your English, your math, your science, history, things like that. Um, we are here to advise you about which one is the best fit for your transfer plans. Um, and sometimes that changes and that's okay too. Um, so that is one of the reasons why we encourage you to meet with us every semester. So if plans change, you know, we can uh, make those adjustments as needed. Um, oops, that's not good. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to programs and classes. So I encourage you to, to go through those. I saw someone mention culinary um, is the program they're interested in. I just wanna show you that what, kind of what these pages look like. So that one is under business. And let's see, this may be, there we go. Culinary arts and management is the one we're gonna look at. And so all of these pages tell you the purpose, the requirements, things like that to get into it. Um, there's also this really helpful feature on the left here. It's called MC. It tells you positions in the area and the pay. So um, that can be really helpful. We also have a career advisor. So if you want to start talking about, you know, what type of career you can have with these jobs, she can help you with that part. Um, but down at the bottom of this page, there's going to be a link to the curriculum. And so this is really helpful. So you can see how many classes are included, what classes are included. It tells you the term that the classes are offered. So some of these programs, classes may only be offered in the fall or may only be offered in the spring. And so that's one thing, you know, when you meet with us for advising that we take into account. So that way, you know, you didn't miss a class that you needed in the fall because um, that can add time to completion. And we certainly don't want that. Um, these are listed in sequential order. So there is not necessarily a requirement for how many classes you take each semester. Um, you know, you could take one class, it will take longer, but you know, you are welcome to do that. We have a lot of students who have families and jobs and other obligations outside of school. So, you know, it may take a little longer to do that um, and that's okay. Um, so again, that's why those are listed that way as opposed to, you know, by semester. Um, so that's just an example of what that looks like. I do wanna go back. Um, to the programs page to start talking about transfer. Um, so back on that same program, programs and classes page, if you scroll down to the bottom, there's a transfer information page. And so the things I'm gonna talk about today are right here, the guaranteed admission agreements, the articulation agreements and the co-enrollment programs that we have. Um, I will start with guaranteed admission agreements and there's an explanation for each of these right here. Those are agreements that the Virginia Community College system, um, so CVCC is a, one of 23 community colleges in Virginia, and as a whole, we are a system. The Virginia Community College system has guaranteed admission agreements with many schools, most schools, public and private um, across the state. So when you click on that, it's gonna take you to a VCCS, Virginia Community College system page um, that lists all of the programs, the guaranteed admission programs. And so, you know, if there's a school or a program that you're interested in, um, you would click on it and it will bring up the actual agreement. And so the one I'll just use as an example is Virginia Tech College, College of Engineering. That's a big one that we have uh, many students pursue. And so all of these, when you click on it, it, they'll look very similar. They're anywhere from two to even eight pages. I think I've seen once um, they can get pretty lengthy. I do encourage students to read through these very carefully. Um, if you're interested in guaranteed admission, Basically, what that means is once this loads, you'll see um, if this if you, the student, meet all of the criteria that's listed here, you are guaranteed admission to that college and maybe even to that specific program. Um, the two main criteria are completing a transferable associate degree and meeting the minimum GPA. So for this particular agreement, it would be for our transfer engineering program, and students would need to have a 3.2 GPA cumulative GPA when they graduate in order to be eligible. Now, some of these um, have additional criteria um, that may require specific classes um, to be guaranteed admission. They may even require specific grades in those classes. And so that's why I really encourage students to go through these, again, very carefully, you know, print it out, highlight it, underline, write down any questions that you have. 
Um, we're not just going to hand this to you and say good luck. We're going to walk you through this whole um, process and make sure that you're meeting your goals. So um, I realize that these can be a little confusing because there is a lot to them. Um, but again, it's good for you to take a look at it first just so we can discuss that. Um, so again, that's the one for Virginia Tech's College of Engineering. As you see here, though, there are a lot to choose from. Um, if you're planning on transferring and your school is listed here, you know, I would definitely encourage you to look at the guaranteed admission agreement and see what's required. If you meet that criteria, again, you're guaranteed admission. So um, that's a really great um, option and opportunity for you. The next one is articulation agreements. Those are almost the exact same thing as the guaranteed admission agreements. However, they are not with the whole community college system. They are with CBCC and the specific school that you see listed here. Um, JMU is one I like to point out. We have a lot of students that like to transfer to JMU. They currently only have articulation agreements with individual community colleges. Um, that will be changing, um, but for now, you know, if you're interested in JMU, it would be under this articulation agreement. The um, criteria is the same, you know, getting the degree, um, meeting the GPA. They do have some specific coursework that's required. So again, you'd wanna read through the agreement details here. Some of these require what's called a letter of intent. So a school may say, we need you to submit the letter of intent if you're planning on transferring in under the guaranteed admission agreement after you've completed you know, 15 credit hours at the community college. That's really just so they can connect with you and make sure that you're on track um, to transfer. So, um, but some of them, it is part of the, the requirements is to do that. So make sure that um, you do that. Again, we will help um, ensure that that happens. Another one I like to talk about is ODU. So we have guaranteed admission agreement with ODU, but we also, CBCC has articulation agreements with ODU. And these are actually for some of our applied associate degrees. So those are the degrees, again, that I mentioned that do not necessarily require, or excuse me, that are not necessarily designed for transfer. Um, but let's say you do engineering technology and then down the line, you decide, you know, I do wanna get a bachelor's degree. If you click on, let's say civil engineering, for example, it will list um, the coursework that's needed in order to be guaranteed admission to their engineering technology bachelor's degree. Um, it is based on our curriculum and there are usually some additional general education classes that are needed in order to be guaranteed admission. That happens with the guaranteed admission agreements as well. So some of this may be above and beyond the associate degree, Again, your counselor will advise you about all of this. Um, the only thing is I just encourage you if you're interested in transfer or guaranteed admission that you let us know early so that we can make sure you're on track for that. Then I'm gonna go back a couple pages and talk about the last thing which is, or the last transfer program that we have, which is co-enrollment programs. Um, so these, are officially called dual enrollment programs. That is confusing with high school dual enrollment. So we call them co-enrollment internally just to eliminate any confusion. What they are is an agreement between CVCC and the four schools you see listed there. If you are admitted into this program, so you would need to apply to CVCC and one of these schools. If you're admitted, you would be eligible to take one class each fall and spring semester at that school at CVCC's tuition rates. So many students come to community college first for any number of reasons. Um, sometimes it could be financial or maybe you're just not ready to be at the four-year school. This is a really great opportunity to get your feet wet if you know you wanna to go to one of these schools um, and the price is right. So um, it's a really great option. Um, I'm the advisor for these. So if again, you're interested in doing these, you will be working with me so that we can make sure that the class you take at that four-year school transfers back to CVCC and meets one of your degree requirements. Um, so I will help advise about that. The first three, so Liberty University, Randolph College, Sweetbriar College, they all have traditional co-enrollment programs, which means it doesn't matter what major you're going into. Any major that you wanna pursue, you can uh, participate in this. With the University of Lynchburg, I do wanna highlight a couple of their programs because they do have additional options. Um, so traditional co-enrollment, of course, is an option. So I've had students do, you know, computer science or psychology, um, but then we, there are two education programs. So if you're interested in teaching, um, you could do the Grow Your Own Teachers Initiative. So that's for students that want to go into either elementary education or special education. Um, and that one 
is a co-enrollment program. There is a prescribed curriculum for classes you would take at CBCC, as well as the classes you would take at the University of Lynchburg through the co-enrollment. Um, again, I will advise you through all of that. Um, then we have a NOICE scholarship. This one's fairly new and I, I do wanna point it out because it is a great opportunity. If you are interested in, again, education and teaching, perhaps at the secondary level um, and in a STEM field, so science or math specifically in this case, um, this program, you can either do co-enrollment or you don't have to, but if you are qualified for this NOICE um, scholarship, it's up to $20,000 per year once you transfer to the University of Lynchburg for up to two years. Um, and that's on top of any other financial aid that you would get. So a really great option if you're interested in teaching. I realize it is a very specific field, um, but it's a great, you know, very good op opportunity. Um, once you graduate from the University of Lynchburg, you will be required to teach for two years for every year of scholarship that you get. Um, and they do help with job placement. So you know, four years of teaching right out of uh, college as well. So that's a really, again, great option. Um, if you have questions about any of these co-enrollment programs, again, I am the contact for that. Um, I'll put my information in the chat um, as soon as I wrap this up um, and you can reach out to me. The last thing I just wanna show you is, this is again, our transfer information page. There is some additional links here that you can check out. We will be launching, the state of Virginia is launching a transfer portal um, I think in September is when that's going to launch. Um, that's going to replace a lot of what the transfer information page does. Um, it's going to be super comprehensive. You're going to be able to do a lot of things on there. Um, I will be doing a lot of training and um, just marketing about that to you all. Um, the last thing I just will share with you um, as the transfer counselor, I do host a lot of transfer events. We will not be hosting them on campus this fall. They will be virtual as they have been in the past year. Um, I send out a transfer Tuesday email weekly with all of those events that are coming up. Um, so just be on the lookout for that. I think I've said everything I can possibly say. I'm gonna pass it back to Michelle. Okay. Um, happy to answer any questions if you have any. Hey, all Emily, right, there, is, gonna... okay, Emily there is one question, I'm sorry. Um, someone was asking, what do you know about the paramedic program and job placement for that? I, you know, I know about the paramedic program. I will say though that Sandra Vire, she is the coordinator for that program. Um, she's very hands-on with those students. Uh, I would maybe recommend reaching out to her as far as the job placement goes. Um, I know that job placement with that program is really good. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question, but I would maybe connect with her as far as job placement. Um, it's a two-year program. It's an applied degree. Um, Hope that helps. I'll jump in and say this, Emily. Uh, these sessions are recorded. So uh, we do have a session where uh, someone is uh, speaking on EMS paramedics and talking uh, in depth about that program. So if you would go to our homepage and look to the left, bottom left, first tile, uh, click in there and it will take you to all of our previous sessions uh, that have been recorded and you can just sit and take your time and, and listen and uh, get all the information that you need. So I would encourage you to most definitely uh, check out uh, the uh, previous sessions. Um, and I think you'll get the information that you're looking for. Now that is still uh, in addition to uh, what Emily shared with you in terms of reaching out to uh, Sandra Beyer. All right, any other questions? That was a lot, it was good, very, very good. All right, well, uh, we do have a student life coordinator uh, on our campus and her name is Deanne McDaniels. She was not able to be with us this evening, but uh, if you are interested in participating in any kind of club or student government, SGA, Deanne would be the person that will uh, uh, coordinate those kind of things. And she would be the individual that you would uh, be in touch with. We'll get her information uh, in the chat as well. Listen, we know that college is about the academics, but there's a social side as well. And so there's a lot of learning that goes on uh, in the activities that she provides for our students, uh, from leadership opportunities to just fun, just having a good time and learning how to relax, uh, learning how to just kind of, you know, manage your, uh, your boredom from time to time, how to manage your time period. Uh, but uh, we do a lot of fun things. She have a lot of things going on. 
And again, uh, her name is Deanne McDaniels and um, please reach out to her if you are interested in clubs, SGA, some kind of leadership opportunity. If you have an idea about maybe some kind of a, a, a sport or something that you'd like to see us uh, have on the campus, Deanne is the person that you would want to uh, be in contact with. So that said, uh, we have now come to the Q&A portion of our evening and we want to open it up. You've been asking questions along the way and that is great, but we also don't want to uh, you know, uh, uh, move too quickly and not give you that opportunity to maybe share a thought or ask a question that you might've been sitting on. So we're gonna give a few minutes for that and I'm going to uh, be quiet and we're gonna listen for your questions. Anybody with any questions, thoughts, ideas, anything you wanna share? Yeah, I do have a question. This is Tina Watson. I was wondering, has everybody already signed up for classes? Am I like the last one who has not? Well, I'll, I'll not let Emily all. take that. Not at all. We So you students can technically enroll until the day before they classes start, which is, so they start on the 23rd. So students can enroll through the 22nd. I certainly don't encourage waiting that long just because the longer you wait, the busier it gets because a lot of students do. Um, so no, you're definitely not the last. You still have plenty of time. And Emily, you may have mentioned this already, but I just want to reiterate that uh, if I'm correct, and you correct me, once they complete an application, they are assigned to someone. Is that correct? Yeah. So once you apply, you are automatically assigned to a navigator. And that's the person that's going to make sure you know the application's finalized, the FAFSA's done, you know, all the onboarding um, stuff is completed. And then they connect you with your assigned counselor for the advising and enrollment. Okay. Anyone else, any other questions? So Josh had a question on how does he know if he gets accepted to the college? Um, for that, Michael, correct me if I'm wrong, if he, when he submits the application, he's accepted. Correct. Yeah, Josh, you'll receive a welcome letter to um, to your email with the title "Welcome to CVCC." That serves as your acceptance letter, and you know that you're a student with us. If if you submit your application and you don't see that or you don't receive it, um, we can always reissue that. You can just call us in the admissions office. We can easily pull up your information, even if you don't think your application went through. We have the capability to see that. So, any specific questions about that, please feel free to call us. And then on the financial aid part, so once you submit your application and you submit your FAFSA, then you will receive a text message and an email from the financial aid office when we have awarded your aid to you. So that's how you'll be notified from our office that uh, one, that we've received your FAFSA and two, that we've awarded your aid. All right, any other questions? Well, we have one more poll and we're going to go ahead and launch that and that poll is a three part question and is asking and i'll put here you go did you find the information in the session helpful uh, was the information in the session worth your time and did you learn anything new about opportunities and programs at cvcc that was very quick thank you very much all right let's go ahead and end the polling and share those results Again, panel, you did a great job. It looks like uh, the students got what they, uh, the callers got what they were looking for. And uh, we appreciate that so very much. Uh, just a few more things and then I will uh, let you go. Again, these sessions are held on Tuesday evenings uh, from 5.30 to 6.30. Uh, we will meet again on next Tuesday and we welcome you to join us again at that time. Uh, these sessions are recorded, so feel free to uh, get to our homepage and uh, Click that tile that will take you to the previous sessions and just, uh, again, uh, take the time and, and listen and get the information that you need. Just because we hang up the call does not mean that you, uh, you can't reach out to us. So feel free to reach out to any of us if you should need to. Again, thank you for joining us this evening and have a good night. Thank you. Good, good night. night. Thank you. Huh? Good, night. Good, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.